Gamergate 2, the mediocre sequel. It's out. You can play now. Come and join in the fight. You don't know what I'm talking about? Well, neither do I. Well, getting into it, <laughs> this is Steam Curators. You not heard of Steam Curators? I have, actually. I haven't. Uh, pretty useless. Now, this... never, I don't think I've ever been on Steam, so I'll take a back seat a little on this one. You're going to come join Helldivers, boy. <laughs> on Discord and everything. But um, yeah, no, okay, you got Steam, you play games on Steam. Right, now Steam thought, hey, there's a lot of games, there's a lot of crap. So maybe we should have a system where some creators you could follow, they would recommend or not recommend games. And then you follow them, and then if you like them, presumably you buy the games they recommend and avoid the ones they don't. Good system. Now, as you can see, um, it's not very interesting. PC gamer is a thing, corporate, so I don't care. Oh, wow. Um, just good PC games. Sounds all right. 600,000 followers. But if you scroll down, you know, you get some, you know, meme ones. Oh, the, the <laughs> Doge? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he likes Helldivers too. And then there's this one. Sweet Baby oh. Ink Detected. Oh, heard of them. <laughs> is now the sixth most followed curator for all of Steam. Oh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That's another example of... Um... Oh, you know those Vikings and ancient Celts? Yeah, they were all black. It was gay and black and women. Uh, you don't know what Sweet Baby Ink is. We've been over it previously. Harry alluded yeah. to, to all this. Um, they are these guys, and I've had to archive it because their website is crashing because too many people are going there <laughs> to see the atrocity that it is. I'm glad I did my part. You, you did indeed. Now, uh, I'm going to read you just a couple of lines from their uh, approach page. They say, Sweet Baby Ink is an inclusive, focus, narrative, and consultation company. So they're cancer. I feel like sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to direct your attention to the aesthetics range of merch that we have on the store. These are beautiful images that I think work really well as posters or mugs. So if you want to support us, going over to the merch store at shop.loadseater.com is easily the best way other than signing up on the website. <laughs> so they also say, we bring in diverse voices to solve diverse problems. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot of the, <laughs> I like that a, a lot of the the scrutiny that's dropped on them. They've been around for a few a, for a few years now consulting on games because Valhalla came out what like 2020 2021. It's when they involved themselves in a game that killed Batman in the most disrespectful way possible that everybody went, nah, I've had enough now. You, you, you don't hit, hurt my boy like that. Mm. So talking <laughs> of... Uh, you leave Bruce alone. Diverse problems. Uh, Sweet Baby Inc. includes... Sorry, provides narrative consultation at any stage of development, hosting a team of diverse talent. So you know the game. You know how this works. Local cancer merchants sell game company cancer on the basis that if you don't, we'll, uh, we'll call you racist and sexist. Not new. I mean, this old... You know, situation is all going on. As you can see here, they're trying to now hide this. This person is alluding to here. So this is their uh, mission statement before and after this blew up. The before section, they're like, yes, we wish to make the games more diverse. And now they've deleted that because, well, they've been found out. And um, <laughs> this isn't new, of course. Game of Gate 1, you may remember, was because of this cancerous individual who turned up and was like, I don't like video games. or play them. Fix them. The local woman who doesn't like or play video games is going to tell the video games industry how that, to run That really was possibly the most remarkable thing about this. I remember when all this blew up back in the day. I was thinking, oh, okay, well, you know, a uh, woman complains about video games. That's something on its Wait, she doesn't play them? Yeah. What? Clear grift. As you can see here, she's still around, amazingly. She also does consulting, just like Sweet Baby Inc. Looking to make your video game project more inclusive? No! <laughs> no, I'm not! Go away, you... Good old hussy. What about making them <laughs> fun? Yeah, like Helldivers. Anyway, so this is a, a guy who's made a link of all the different consulting groups who all do the same kind of cancerous thing. And some of them are tied to Sweet Baby Games, but it's all the same crap. You know the score at this point. It's always slightly surprising to me how many companies or organizations or projects are involved in all this sort of thing. Obviously, gaming is only one small corner of the, the wider drive to diversify and subvert. But even in gaming, look how many there are. Yeah. You all these would... people are stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's a big grift. And as far as I can tell, a lot of the time, it's industry insiders paying people that they're already associated with and friends with to do things they're already planning on doing. Because what I found from research was that Sweet Baby Inc., all the members had been part of massive studios like Ubisoft for years before they actually started it. And so these were people already in these companies doing things the companies were already planning on doing, but you can circulate the money. 
mm-hmm. give money to your friends to do things you're already planning on doing. And there are lots of people in those companies. We've had comments from people anonymously stating that the companies are filled with lower end workers who are doing the coding, doing the heavy lifting, who don't want any of this stuff, but they need a job. It's the higher ups. Some loser who's like, I want a black woman in it. So I'm going to pay Anita Sarkeesian to insist that we need a black woman. That's an insulting fee. But getting back to that Steam thing over here, so you can see, let's, uh, let's give it, a, give it a, a click. How do we do this? Ah, I computer. I'm not logged in. Damn it. Whatever. Point being, there's a whole bunch of games here that they list, and uh, Sweet Baby Inc. Is a can you not just stuff. click on their name to see the full list? Is it? Oh my god. Technology. <laughs> they don't recommend sheet. They just don't recommend things that have Sweet mm. Baby Inc. attached to them. They're like, yeah, don't get it. Mm. Trust me. You know those cancer merchants that you keep hearing about? Yeah, they're involved with this one, so leave it be. And, uh, that's the purpose in this whole thing. And it seems to be a pretty good suggestion, if nothing else, because as you mentioned earlier, that Suicide Squad game. This is the game that Sweet Baby Inc. worked on. And as you can see, these are the player counts, according to Steam. That's when it launched. That's, you know, people going to bed and waking up. And then there's nobody. Nobody playing it. And that's after just over a month. A month. It's struggling to get 500 people at any time playing the video game. That's a hell of a drop. And that's in got... the whole world, in the whole internet, that is, I take it. Everyone on right. Steam. Yeah. Uh, oh, on Steam at least. Right. Okay, have, right. have you got yeah. any figures for the game, not Gotham Knights, but Batman Arkham Knight, what that's still doing these days? Because that was the last really well-received Rocksteady game back from 2015, so nine years old now. Not Do we... my head. John uh, I... is doing the Googling as we speak. What oh, yeah, yeah. Know? Check that out. Uh, Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight spelled K. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you see what that's that. doing right now. How old is that one? Uh, that's nine years old. Nine years old. And it's got ten times the players. <laughs> 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 yep, all right. See, that, the point being, you know, game good, more important than game got cancer. I know it's a weird sell. Mm. <laughs> Tough thing for the industry to learn. <laughs> but you've got to learn it <laughs> if you like the smell of money. So there we are. So what's been happening is that literally some guys, some Portuguese, well, they're not Portuguese, they're Brazilian. So New World Portuguese got together and made that creators page and it's blown up to 200,000. It might not seem that big compared to like YouTube channels or something, obviously, but that's the sixth biggest creator page on all of Steam, which is the, you know, one place for gaming at this point. De facto. I'm not saying it should be, it's de facto is. And that's pretty good. 200,000, however you want to measure it, is, mm. is decent. But in the gaming world of, you know, and especially in Steam, to be the sixth biggest thing of anything in Steam is amazing. Mm. So that's a massive, massive thing in that area. So what happened? Well, um, this pissed off all the right people, because of course it did. I mean, I showed you that they're rewriting their website as we speak, trying to hide it. But a local reporter also joined and was trying to uh, dox them. So these are the messages from their Discord and uh, the reporter's messages in here. Hello, would anyone in this group be willing to answer a few questions for Kotaku? Uh, <laughs> Journo detected. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I love how you can see it's in Portuguese here. Like these people, she's writing in English. I'm sorry, just rude, if nothing else. Just curious if I could speak to any of the creators of this server. Just want to talk to you. I'm still <laughs> here, smiley face. Yes, yes, you are. I don't know why. <laughs> and then it goes on to talk about here about why don't any of you have your names pictures associated with your accounts because mm. you're snooping around <laughs> hello SS <laughs> no I will not give you my full name <laughs> you utter snake I mean I'm sorry but this is you know utterly transparent and guess what this person did well they work at Kotaku so they wrote a dog shit article complaining about it so here we go as you can see sweet baby ink doesn't do what some gamers think it does um, and then to, her to, name, be, to yeah. be fair, that line underneath the headline where it says they're not forcing it in is technically lines up what, with what I've been saying. Yeah, these companies, yeah. they're already planning on doing this to their games, but they've found a way to pay their buddies to pretend to do it as well. The mafia does not force you to pay protection money. <laughs> yeah. Especially it's, if you're <laughs> related to the mafia. It's just a mute point. It's just an obvious lie. I'm going to read some of this because it's revealing how much of a lie this whole situation is. She writes, its employees have faced rampant harassment as a direct result of this Steam curator. That's bollocks. Because of their actions. Industry figures have to, had to deny allegations that Sweet Baby Inc. comes in and completely changes their games. I wonder why that is. 
Sweet Baby Ink isn't forcing diversity, it's happening naturally. Yeah, just like getting your legs broken for not paying the, the due money. <laughs> Its work is focused on writing stories and dialogue. They are not a diversity, equity, and inclusion consultancy firm. That means that they ensure the game's plot points make logical sense and are satisfying to players, and that characters speak and behave in consistent ways. Right, okay. Just humble writers. If if that was all that they were doing, I watched Mauler's Super Cup of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. They suck at that too. (laughs) (laughs) They're (laughs) awful at that. Right, you're facing against the Flash, a man who can move faster than literally the speed of time, according to it. And instead of, you know, just breaking all of their necks, he just runs around in circles waiting for you to shoot him and stand still. Amazing writing for yes. an amazing team. Uh, this author, though, now you can tell that she's a sincere person trying to found the truth, because she didn't do what you just did and go to the material and find out if it's true. She just went to Sweet Baby Inc. CEO and asked him, And he said, yes. (laughs) Well, that's enough. That's my work done. I'm going home. I believe you might have just uh, misgendered Callum. I believe that their CEO is a uh, woman of color. Oh, I misspoke. It's the Uh, co-founder. All right. David Bedard. Oh, I think he's the the white French Canadian who seems to do most of the work. (laughs) But isn't... (laughs) Of course it is. (laughs) Isn't gamer journalism uh, an oxymoron? There's no journalism involved. There could be. I mean, right, well, yeah, it's yeah. not impossible, but um, it's not really, to call it journalism is a bit much, a bit strong, really. I mean, this was what I the mean, whole Gamergate thing on. was about in the first place, when you found out all of the journalists were just friends with all of the people that they were supposedly scrutinizing. Or and, literally having sex yeah. with the games they were reviewing. Or having, yeah, they were having sex with the games. <laughs> where they had <laughs> sex with Depression Quest. That's... <laughs> <laughs> It was a really innovative game, the way you could do that. <laughs> back, back to the co-founder before I do something else stupid. Um, he says, came with a number of peripherals to hell. He says, contrary to popular belief, the people making the games uh, want to make an experience better for all players, and that the more diverse and more representative the product, that's just a byproduct of the games getting better. Okay, I'm not going to waste your time with any more of these obvious lies. I mean, well, well, no, no, no. To, to be fair, that part is true. These companies are already full of at least the top decision makers in these gaming companies, full of woke retards that want to do this anyway. Yeah, but he says that we're going to make the games better. Well, yeah, that's and the as lie. a result, they become more diverse. It's that's like, the lie. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'm not, come on, I play games. I'm not, I don't not know what's going on because I play them and get disappointed and then drop out for ages. But getting back to the story, because uh, remember this dude? Remember Potato Man? No, I'm being rude, but he's a great yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. I still stand by as did, nothing wrong. <laughs> as did nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah no. He was yeah. entirely right. Because another one yeah. of the games Sweet Baby Inc. worked with is Starfield. And uh, you may remember the profound pronoun bullshit that was in there for no goddamn reason. Literally, it, it was just there to push ideology. And, um, well, he's been proven right. In fact, someone owes him an apology. Because you may remember this. Oh, yeah, I've been seeing this as it's been developing this morning. Yeah. So this is a, a fella, the act man over here, who was responding to a local man shouting about pronouns. Gorilla-shaped man on the verge of crime because Starfield lets you pick pronouns. And then mocking him and saying he should grow up. And then uh, a couple of months later. So I started looking into Sweet Baby Inc. And I cannot fathom why the game studio would hire the narrative consultancy group isn't that what lead writers are for? Why not just hire a better writing team in house? Lamel. Yes. It's almost like they're not actually writers. They're instead, commissars. Which is why you end up with fucking pronouns. <laughs> to, to, to highlight something else I found out in my Suicide Squad segment, when there was the video that they released on their YouTube channel, which was a, a horribly boring hour long discussion giving the history of the entire group. One of the things that I highlighted that they said that we watched was that the woman in charge said that, yeah, um, we don't really care about deadlines. If you do a script in an hour, as long as that's uh, as as long as it meets our standards, that's fine. So the whole thing is like they just want to make their staff comfortable, not really have to do anything. And if you shit out a script in an hour, as long as it hits the deadline, that's fine. As long as they reach mm. our standards, your standards are. I um, I of course up. really like as there's a bit of content on the website from a year or two ago where I interviewed Az, a big fan of Hills vs. Babyface. I'd never heard of 
at the Axe Man before, but I saw this on Twitter yesterday, and uh, obviously Nerd Rotics on Az's side in his corner, of course. And um, he called him Act Ma'am. I thought it was interesting. And loads of people, although I'd only heard of uh, the Act Man yesterday, uh, loads of people in the comments were saying stuff like he's the Ian Miles Strong of, of gaming commentary, i.e. a uh, rotten egg, mm. essentially, just well, uh, not to be trusted and just to... Well, I can't I, speak to this. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. What I can speak to is the man was wrong. He was demonstrably wrong at the time, yeah, and has now right. discovered he is yeah. wrong. And it's but like, when, that should have been obvious. When this all came about, when as the video of As was first released, I jumped into the fray in Twitter, defending him, calling out some of the people who were trying to call him out. And I actually responded to the act man who was trying to defend it, and I, I called him a coward. I said as much that you don't know what you're talking about, or you're just defend you're towing a line because you're a coward, mm. is essentially what I told him. The funny thing is, act man and As have both appeared um, on um, on EFAP. Okay. And so they kind of travel in, or have traveled in the same circles, but it just goes to show that they're completely opposite one another when it comes to their approach to this, where As kind of understands what's going on in the world right now and can mm. recognize when it's being thrown in his face, whereas the act man just throws out the hands in the air. Why do you even care, yeah, bro? It seemed like the whole argument was that. Why? Are you, why yeah, you I was anti woke uh, five years ago, but now I don't care because the whole thing doesn't matter. This doesn't mean I've lost. This just means I've matured in some way. Yeah, no, it just means you're wrong. Uh, can I like, just say one last thing or ask one last thing? Because I honestly don't know who the act man is until yesterday. He's not but the main focus of this. If, no, no, sure. But I was rude about him just then. I don't know anything about the man. So, but if he's been on EFAP, then so he's not that bad or or is he I, I don't know if he's been on, if Maul has had him on EFAP then he's, he's I imagine he can't be like many either his way. attitude has okay. changed over the years Callum doesn't want to talk about the act the, the man has just um, well woken up is, right. is oh, all, right. the only reason they even brought him up well that's and something he's not the only one but it is kind of embarrassing that you even had to wake up someone that was bloody obvious I mean Starfield at the time I remember I mean this blew up because it was funny as well I mean this the game was insecure from the get go about its woke nonsense and had to push it on you for example, for people listening, we're looking at a pink mug that's in the game that says, never apologize for being a powerful fucking woman. And it's just like, yeah. It's the kind of thing insecure women would have. But a secure woman doesn't need that. Just saying. So again, it's feminist nonsense. But that's not the only thing. Uh, the last thing done on here is the Sweet Baby Inc. Well, they're employees. You can just go find them. They're, they're publicly, you know, out there, like all companies. And um, well, they're awful people, it turns out. Big surprise. Yeah, shock. Turns out that that diversity company is full of people who hate, in this case, uh, white men. She just, she just hates white men. One of the usual targets. <laughs> like, nothing new there. There's just a series of tweets of her complaining about them. Because uh, white men are the number one customer base and best creators in the gaming industry. So they're awful. Unlike me, who spends my time whining. Okay. Great. Thanks. Really contributed to humanity. Good luck. But talking about... Uh, the best people making video games. That's about where this ends, but I, I wanted an excuse to talk about tits, so I inserted it in. <laughs> I said this to Harry earlier. So, um, the Japs, they're the only other people who can make video games. Something weird's going on there, and I just don't know where to put this in. I can't make a segment out of it on its own and not get fired, so I thought I'd show it in here. <laughs> um, this is Hallam slipping the tits in, as always. Yeah. <laughs> so, Square Enix, for some reason, a remade Final Fantasy, and they've, they've started covering up the tits. I don't really know what to make of That's this. That's not it's even just covering them up. That's just removing. Yeah, so they, they well, made this woman flat-chested. And then uh, in this shot, they gave her a corset for some reason, which I just find funny. Is this in the Japanese version as well? I believe so, at least according to the uh, post here. This one's the funniest, because as you can see, there's basically no cleavage. And they covered that one up as well for just some reason. <laughs> like, okay, cover up, you absolute whore. But I, I will be making a prediction now, which is the Western port. Because, I mean, the East has got its own problems with Sweet Baby Inc., but apparently the, uh, the Eastern side is getting their own problems in this regard. So we'll, we'll check out the Western port of Final Fantasy. Presumably, it'll look like this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to, uh, you know, appeal to people's tastes in the gaming industry. Not the, not the people buying the games, but... There is, though, well, just a very general trend towards prudishness, right? Or away from the sexualization of anything, right? Like, say, for example, grid girls in Formula One or, or MotoGP, just get rid of grid girls, for example, right? Or just cover up stuff that doesn't really need to be covered up. Or, you know, you look back at the, 
the seventies or the eighties or the nineties, and there was just like things were more a bit more explicit now, than they are today. And uh, like there's no, it wasn't really a problem. It wasn't you know it didn't it didn't poison society to have I'm a bit of cleavage weird. sometimes or, or have grid girls or something. It didn't create a whole generation of like male rapists or whatever they claim it, you know, whether it's toxic masculinity is it, oh, uh, it's just was... nonsense. It's just crazy. It's some sort of collective madness, some sort of, some sort of weird prudish dream that the left want to impose on the, the whole of the West. I don't, well, like, I, it's crazy. I don't, I, it's I, weird. I, I, it's I so don't weird. necessarily see what the left is doing in the West as, is, I mean, <laughs> But, but this is the Japs. Well, well, okay. well obviously, right. this is, this is the Japs. But what we've got is the superimposed face of the Western ideal beauty standard. Yes, right now, it's very clearly a man. Because because um, prudishness, uh, if it was prudishness that we were aiming for over here, then so many young girls wouldn't be being encouraged to flaunt themselves on OnlyFans as as young as uh, as seemingly point. possible. Um, what point. it seems to be in terms of the media that's presented to people is just a general attack on beauty. All right, that's fair. At all, all right. which is why no feminine video game character is now allowed to look en- like anything other than Ogre Shrek from uh, Ogre Fiona from Shrek. <laughs> Unless you're a Japanese company, but then there's, there's a whole weird story behind all this. So Square Enix have publicly said that they were covering up the tits to try and get a better age rating. So they wanted to be rated teen rather than mature. But people looked into that and that didn't make any bloody sense because a lot of games with lots of cleavage a rated teen. Yeah. So it's just bollocks. So who knows? Who knows what's going on in Square Enix, but I just found it funny to include. Although I have seen the British version of the Final Fantasy game that's coming out. Here you are. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. But that's the end of that. Uh, my only point was uh, do your part. Do go and follow <laughs> Baby Ink Detected. <laughs> it's good fun, if nothing else, because it takes nothing from us, costs us nothing. But my God, does it mean the world to those people? If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Epoch series, this episode on Leonardo. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>